Federal Reserve has a 110-year-old playbook to steal the AI boom from you and me. I delivered the keynote that connected three dots that no one else is talking about. Why AI is making everything cheaper, but you stay poor. The Fed's 1913 trick that intercepts every technology boom and the $73 trillion glitch they can't control. Now, the 300 million jobs that Goldman Sachs say will disappear, well, they're right about the number, but they're dead wrong about what happens next. So let me show you what I showed them. Let's go. AI는 더 이상 잠깐의 유행이 아니고 비트코인도 단순한 투기 자산이 아닙니다. 기업들이 앞다퉈 매수하는 핵심 자산이 되고 있습니다. 마크모스는 지난 20년간 여러 기술 회사를 창업하고 매각하며 모든 경제의 상승과 하락을 경험한 인물입니다. 그 경험을 살려 현재는 비트코인 벤처 캐피탈 펀드 파트너로 활동하며 기업들에게 자문을 제공하고 있는데요. 이런 그가 지난 110년간의 기술 발전 혜택 그리고 정부가 그 혜택을 어떻게 짓밟았는지 비트코인과 AI가 그 혜택을 어떻게 우리에게 돌려줄지 이야기합니다. 그 중요한 내용 함께 보시죠. All right, thank you very much. We have some exciting stuff to talk about. Groundbreaking, world-changing, opportunity-changing stuff. The deflation dividend we're going to talk about right now today. But we're going to start off with the shocking number. Some of you guys might have seen this or heard this. 300 million. 300 million is the number of jobs that are supposedly going to be taken away per Goldman Sachs. It's the number of jobs that are going to be lost because of artificial intelligence, because of AI. They try to tell you that the future we're going into, there's not going to be any jobs. We might need <coughs> universal basic income to take care of people. What are they going to do? Other reports say that maybe as much as half the jobs will be taken by AI. But I'm here to tell you something different. And in fact, history tells us, it actually shows us and gives us a blueprint for the answer. And the blueprint tells us that this is not a moment to fear, but instead, it's the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. Now, while Goldman Sachs is panicking about AI jobs being taken, what they're missing is the much bigger picture. The much bigger picture is that we're not just in a technological revolution of AI and Bitcoin and decentralization. We're in the final phase of an 80-year financial cycle that's actually resetting right now. There's a 40-year bull market in bonds that started back in the 1980s and it's ending. Government debt levels, unsustainable. And here's the paradox. The very system that the governments are trying to save right now with money printing is designed to steal the very gains of AI from you. That's the paradox. And this creates a perfect storm. I talk a lot about cycles. It's not just a 50-year technological cycle that we have right now, or an 80-year uh, financial cycle I just showed you, but there's actually three cycles that are converging right now for the same time, a 50-year technological revolution cycle, an 80-year financial cycle, and a 250-year political revolution cycle. It's where humanity takes this giant leap forward, and it happens about every 50 years. It's happened six times now in the last 250 years. And there's four distinct phases that this goes through. Phase one is the technology emerges. It was introduced. It's fun. It's revolutionary. It's disruptive. We try a bunch of different things. Early adopters experiment with this technology. We got Bitcoin. Then we got a cryptocurrency boom. Phase two is where we have the panic and the resistance. This is where AI is right now. The establishment starts to panic. Oh my gosh, governments need to get a control on this. Workers start fearing replacement. Let's start talking about welfare, universal basic income, phase three, adoption, integration. Now the technology proves it's valuable. Business is integrated. New jobs start to emerge. And phase four is the transformation and the abundance. That's where the society is completely transformed. Living standards rise. But not if governments have their way with it. We're going to talk about that. Now, every generation thinks that this time is different. I have the receipts for 250 years of data that every 50 years, the tech wave kills drudgery, not jobs. For 250 years, the doomers have been wrong, and they're going to continue to be wrong because the mistake that they make is they're mistaking task disruption with job disruption. It's a big difference. 
We're on the sixth one. I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. Let's walk through them. Phase number one, 1771. It was the birth of the Industrial Revolution. This was the first time we had mechanized machines, machines that could do the work of 5,000 men. Oh, my gosh, what do the 5,000 men do? They don't have jobs anymore. So they literally smashed the machines. They burned the machines. They were afraid of technology replacing their jobs. But what really happened? Well, we know that in Manchester, where this started, jobs grew 12 times from 25,000 jobs to 300,000 people working in factories. New jobs emerged everywhere. Factory workers, engineers, transportation workers, coal miners, jobs that were never there before. If employment didn't shrink, employment exploded. Wave number two. This one's very relevant for where we're at today because AI is going to replace all the drivers, self-driving cars self-driving taxis, right? The whole transportation industry is under attack, right? Well, we saw the same thing with rails. We used to transport stuff across continents with buggies and carts, and now steam engines and railways would take away all those jobs. But guess what? New jobs emerged. Now we needed people to build the railways. Station operators, locomotive engineers, conductors, the transportation revolution didn't eliminate jobs. It created an entire economic expansion around moving goods, around moving people, but faster than ever before. Wave number three, steel and electricity, 1875, we saw the panic. Electricity is gonna take away manual labor, they told us. The reality, the global economy exploded. As a matter of fact, manufacturing went up four times from 2.5 million workers to 10 million workers from 1880 to 1920. Again, new industries exploded we had never seen before. Electrical equipment, production, steel manufacturing, power generation. Wave number four, oil and auto production, 1908. For all of humanity, people walked and rode horses and now we had cars, amazing. But what about the buggy makers? What about the craft manufacturers? Well, the reality is we created an entire automobile industry from nothing. Auto manufacturing, petroleum extraction, refining, gas stations, mass retail networks. One innovation didn't replace jobs. It created multiple new economic sectors. You see, people think of these things in a vacuum. It takes away jobs that we see right now, but it creates jobs that we never even imagined. Wave number five, the computer revolution. ATMs, they're gonna get rid of bank tellers. We're not gonna need banks. All the people working at banks will be gone. Computers are gonna replace everybody, they told us. The reality didn't happen. Computer-related jobs grew 10 times in 30 years, from 450,000 workers to 4.6 million workers in just two decades. You see, everybody that's focused on losing jobs thinks about it with a scarcity mindset, but businesses, they wanna grow. So because they can become more efficient, they don't get rid of people, they grow the business, that's what happens. We have Looking back at the ATM, everyone said they would eliminate bank tellers. Why go into the bank when I can just use an ATM, right? And we see ATMs everywhere, they're out here. But yet bank, stillers, bank tellers are still there because what happened? Well, the lower costs meant that banks could afford to open up more branches. More branches means more teller jobs. And they persisted because again, that market expanded. Technology reduced costs, so the markets expanded and more jobs were created. And this is the pattern that happens every single time. It creates demand in areas that we didn't even know there would be demand. So now the current AI data is that this is what's already happening. The World Economic Forum projects 170 million jobs will be created versus just 92 being displaced. Now that's a key differentiator, displaced. LinkedIn reports a 60% increase in AI job postings. There was no AI job postings before. Now, before I explain why you're not getting rich from this AI boom, let me just show you how massive these productivity gains are. Programming productivity is up 126%. Technical analyst tasks are up 70%. Overall task completion up 60%. Document creation 59%. Customer service is 14% more efficient. Productivity gains everywhere. Now the historical pattern, it never fails us. A 30 to 40% increase in tax display, task displacement creates 60 to 80% more roles, new jobs, new positions we didn't think about. So AI deletes the chore and we as humans get a promotion. We get to work on higher value things. And AI is creating the biggest productivity revolution since electricity, and it should make all of us rich, but it won't. 
그러니까 새로운 기술 혁명이 올 때마다 사람들은 일자리를 잃는 것만 걱정했지만 실제로는 더질 좋은 일자리들이 많이 생겨왔고 결국 중요한 건그 변화에 발맞춰 시대를 따라가는 것인데요. AI로 사라지는 건 단순 노동뿐입니다. 이어서 이 기술 혁명의 혜택이 일반 사람들에게 제대로 돌아가지 않도록 정부가 어떤 방식으로 방해해왔는지 그리고 왜그 방법이 더 이상 통하지 않는지 거기서 비트코인과 AI가 어떤 역할을 하는지까지 이야기합니다. 이런 전문가들의 주요 분석은 차트 교수 인사이트 룸에 먼저 올라가니 고정 댓글 링크를 통해 무료로 확인할 수 있습니다. The question is, if every tech cycle creates this massive abundance, this efficiency gains, then why don't we feel it? Why are we working harder just to stay afloat? But why did past generations get so rich from technology, but not us? WTF happened. 1913. It's when the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States, was founded. It's when the classical gold standard era ended. You see, the world had been on a sound money standard, an equity-based system for millennia. But in 1913, we had the birth of the Central Bank, the Federal Reserve of the United States, and that was the year that money broke. Everything changed after that moment. Now, when the classical gold standard era ended, it went from about 1870 to 1913. Economists call this era, quote, the most perfect monetary system ever created. During that period, there was massive growth, massive prosperity. The growth of the, of the economy grew by 4.2% on average. Industrial production exploded 682%. Real wages, The amount of money that people got to take home to increase their quality of life went up by 60%, making more money, more money, more money. At the same time, inflation stayed at zero. Imagine your wages going up by 60%, but prices not going up at all. That's when real living goes up. Now, after the gold standard era, post-1913, GDP growth started falling. And it fell from 4.6% down to 2.8%, a 33% decline in productivity. The dollar value lost 97% of its purchasing power during that decline. Productivity growth fell all the way down to less than 1% in the pure fiat era. Now, under sound money, in the gold standard era, technology made everyone richer. Under fiat money, technology makes us all richer. poor. We work harder and harder, our money buys us less and less, and our quality of life goes down. And you can see average growth falling and falling and falling as we moved away from sound money standard. Here's how they steal your productivity gain. Number one, technology improves, costs fall, prices fall, so everyone gets more purchasing power. You work less, your money buys you more goods and services in the future. But under fiat money, technology improves still, costs fall again, but this time central banks immediately print money to fight that healthy deflation. Real productivity gains get inflated away before they reach working people. It's a leaky bucket. Technology is making our lives easier. We are working less because technology does it, but all of those gains get taken away. About two years ago, inflation in the United States reached 9%. That means for the average person making $30 an hour, they had to work an extra 10 hours per month just to buy the same amount of goods and services that they did the month before. An extra 10 hours per month that could have gone to your health or your fitness, your new business, your family, But instead, you had to work those hours just to have the same quality of life that you had the month before. But this time is different. This time, we have the biggest productivity revolution with AI that we've seen since the 1870s. It's happening right now. We have absolute scarcity meeting infinite efficiency. For the first time in 110 years, we can actually keep the gains. That's where Bitcoin comes in. Instead of watching your purchasing power dwindle down, instead of watching your purchasing power seep out of this leaky bucket for the last 110 years, we have digital sound money. We have Bitcoin. And here's how it captures the deflation dividend. So when AI makes us 40% more efficient, more productive, we can take that time, that cost savings that we get, that we get 
and now we can store that in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, is, of course, is the only digital asset, scarce asset with a fixed supply of only 21 million. No central bank can print more. No politician can debase it. Your AI productivity gains that the world gets are able to be locked in in Bitcoin permanently, and the energy cannot leak out of it. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is fixed supply. It's completely decentralized. Nobody controls it. It preserves that healthy deflation, so our money can buy us more goods and services in the future. Now, remember, we talked about the four distinct phases of this 50-year technological cycle. There's the institution phase in phase one. Bitcoin's in that phase. We're seeing now in phase two, the institutions are here. Micro strategy, or now strategy, is buying up as much Bitcoin as they can. Meta Planet, we keep seeing their ads pop up. They're on a race to buy Bitcoin. Every treasury company is trying to add as much Bitcoin as they can to the balance sheets. Governments are starting to accumulate Bitcoin at a rapid rate. We're watching the smart money position before this mass deployment starts to happen. The frenzy phase for Bitcoin parallels what's happening with AI. Because in these 50-year technological revolution cycles, it's not about one single technology, it's a cluster. And so Bitcoin and AI are tracking together. Both technologies are converging at the perfect moment. It's not a coincidence. This is how the cycles work. AI plus Bitcoin equals the productivity revolution that we finally get to keep. Think of it this way. AI is the engine that generates massive economic energy, and Bitcoin is the battery that now stores that economic energy. Now, this is digital abundance meeting digital scarcity for the first time in history. Technology finally serves us, not just central bankers. Now for 110 years, as I showed you, our productivity gains have been stolen continuously by the money printer. Working against technology, every time we make our lives easier, they take a little bit away. AI is now creating the largest abundance boom in history. Don't get caught up in the doomers. They're just running cover so they can continue to print money and steal that from you. The biggest abundance in history is right in front of us. And now Bitcoin makes sure we finally get to keep it.